Hi, so in this new series, I'm going to be taking a detailed look at Warcraft Logs, how to use it, how to get the best out of it. In this first episode, I'm basically going to show you how to get it up and running and also some of the basics that you can be looking up there. And then each episode after that, which is coming out week by week, I'll be going through a particular feature in some detail. So the first thing you should do is to go to the website www.warcraftlogs.com. You'll need to create yourself a login. The good news here is you can actually log in using your Battle.net. This is handy for getting access to guild logs. It may well be that you've just joined a guild, they use logs, you want to ask how to access them. If you sign in with your Battle.net, it'll recognize that character. If that character is in that guild, you automatically get access to them. You don't need any special permissions. If you want to upload your own logs, let's say you're in a guild and they don't do their own logs, Maybe it's a heroic guild, for example. Not all of them do their own logs. But you need to because you're looking at maybe applying elsewhere and what other guilds will want is to see your logs. So what you will need to do is to set this up yourself. So you'll need to download the client. Then you'll need to go to the system menu in game. Go to network and make sure you tick advanced combat login. Now, you can log combat and upload without ticking that box, but there's a certain number of useful details missing if you do that. Now, the way to actually initiate logging in the game is you use a command slash combat log. It's useful to have this attached to a macro and put it somewhere. And if you press this, it toggles on and off combat logging. So the first time you use it, it will start your logging, which you could do at the start of a raid. And then it, don't start and stop it halfway through the raid. Just leave it logging. At the end of the raid, when you're finished, hit it again and it will stop logging. There are some add-ons which are useful for this as well, but I'm not going to go over those. To find your log, you would find them in a logs folder which will automatically be created in your World of Warcraft folder. You upload them using the client. It is possible to upload after the event. It is also possible to live log, but check on your system. This may well slow down the game for you. Okay, so once you're in, you can be checking, oh, that's clever. You can check your uh, logs, you've got your personal logs there if you've made any, or the logs for your guild. So let's just uh, click onto some of those. You've got access to a number of fights. So let's just pick on one and have a look at some of the details. We can have a look in here. In later series, as I say, we'll be looking at them in more detail. So. Analyze, first of all, one good one to have a look at is problems. Problems tells you a few useful things. It tells you, for example, how many people have double botted. There will be times when DPS is very, very important. And of course, in these times, it is extra important, as if it weren't already, that DPS, at least, call what's called pre-pot, which is to use a potion just before you pull. So the cooldown can finish. And then you can use a second part later on. This is just a farm fight, so not everyone's double potting here, sort of down to them. But if you've got a two by anyone's name, it, you know that they have potted twice. If there's only a one, or we're still nothing, then that means they haven't at all. Health stones and health, healing tonics is another good one. Obviously, we shouldn't use health stones unless they happen to be good for us. There's very few of us for whom a healing potion wouldn't actually do more healing. But let's say someone died and it wasn't a one shot. They died over a period of several seconds. Alarm should have been ringing in their head. Did they use a healing potion? Well, this will tell you. Obviously, no one did here. This is an easy farm fight for us. But on a progress fight, we might expect if some people have died and they had time to do something about it, that one of the things they had time to do was use a healing potion. So then go into the analyze again in terms of what we've got. So we've got the summary tab, which is just literally that. You can have a look at the overall raid composition. This is useful if you are looking at other guilds. If you want to see how they kill it, you can see if their composition is anything like your own. Now damage done, of course, most people are only going to be interested in the numbers, the percentiles up the side and up there. You know, if this one's a bad one, people always look at this one and say, oh, well, is it any better for my eye level? No, it's even worse. Oh, dear. But uh, in terms of useful things, first of all, you've got an overall timeline of the raid DPS over time. You can see it there during periods of heroism. You could take off total and put an individuals there. So if I wanted to 
just look at the ebb and flow of mine, for example. I might see that a particular period is where it drops right down. I might think, well, what's happening at that time? Is there any way that I could maybe shorten that period of time where it's dropping really low? When it's peaking, again, at that time, it says, I, I'm, I'm maximizing it, things like that. Now, let's put it back onto total. And again, you can map it on your own. This, is, this could potentially be useful if you're looking at two players of the same class or spec to see if their overall pattern of DPS is the same. However, in terms of useful things, so you could click on a name and it will tell you the breakdown of their damage. You can see the most powerful damage and ability and so on. Now, over the whole course of a fight, this is not necessarily as useful as you might think. This is where put it looking at portions of fight can be useful or even looking at the enemies themselves. So if we look here, we can see that uh, Scorperon, who is the main boss, is the one that we should be targeting uh, frequently. So let's say on this one you're thinking, well, the ads need to die, but you know they should be being AoE'd, passively cleaved, but the focus should still be on the boss. So you might look at some other um, ads instead and go, okay, well, let's look at the Acid more Scorpids. What's the damage being done to those? Oh, Divine Storm, well, that's an AoE ability, that's fine. Divine Hammer, that's an AoE ability, that's fine. Wake of Ashes, that's an AoE ability, oh, great. So what we can see when we look down here is we don't have any of the damage that is targeted damage that, for example, we had on the boss, such as in my case, Templar's Verdict, Crusader Strike, uh, Melee. These can only be done on my target. So that sort of demonstrates that I'm not switching my target, at least. I am obviously AoE in the hell out of the ads. My goodness, of course I am. It's Scorpion and it's a farm boss. But were this something where you had to be focusing more single target DPS at a particular time and sort of ignoring the ads or at least just passively cleaving, then you might look at choices. So in my particular case, if I was using Divine Storm when I'm supposed to be just single targeting, I might be a bit suspicious. So the way to have a little look at that is we could look at Tychondrius. So by clicking on Tychondrius, what I could do is, again, I could click on myself there. So at periods of time when Tychondrius is up, there are no Divine Storms being used, which also means that I'm not cleaving onto those ads. Obviously, when the bats are up, and I could easily, if this will behave itself, click on the bats, which is Phantasmal Bloodfangs. Obviously, Divine Storm very much in action at that point. So you can also use it to see what damage is being done on particular mobs. Now, damage taken is quite a good one as well. So this can be useful if you are trying to see if you're, someone is taking unnecessary damage. So let's say we go to Grand Magistrix Elisand. Let's just click me off there so we can look at everyone. Damage taken, so we can look at people. We can see obviously the tanks are taking the most damage and so on. So let's say we, instead of wanting to have a look at the people that were taking damage, how much each person was taking, but the actual abilities, the sources of damage and from each one. So we can click on this drop down menu here and put taken from ability. So now what we'll get is a series of spells, which we can see obviously a great many of these are essential damage. What we could have a look is say, our kinetic ring. Straight away, I can see that I'm on this. I'm going to click it anyway to hell with it. So these are the rings, of course, that we are supposed to avoid. So that's it for damage taken. Obviously, healing is very much like damage done. We can see how much people are healing, but also we can see the sources of healing that are being used. And again, you could look at that at particular times. Threats, buffs. We can, for example, again, this is where it's important to click on an actual person. So I'll click on me again. You could, for example, see how well you're lining up buffs. So out of all these buffs, of course, the damage buffs for DPS be particularly important. There are some of these buffs that we have no control over. There are some of them that we do have control over. So our DPS cooldown, for example, we've got a lot of control over. Are we combining that with other DPS cooldowns that we've got control over, such as, for example, Potion of the Old War there, which you can see I only used once there. It's farm. It's fine. Actually, I think someone may have ninja pulled there because that bar should be a bit longer. That's not my fault. You can also see here defensive buffs. So were these used? Were people using their defensive spells again at times when 
during, during high damage when they're supposed to be. You can see at what times people are using those. Moving along, you can have a look at a death log. So what you could have a look at here. Obviously, it's not necessarily sensible just to look at the damage that finished someone off. The damage that finished someone off may not be what actually killed them. So you can have a look, for example, at their final moments. So you can see what damage they were taking. You can also see what healing they were taking in a particular period of time. You can also see if they were using any defensive cooldowns to save themselves from the oncoming cataclysm. It tells you here the last time they used these defensives. Obviously, these ones would not necessarily have saved them against that Arcanetic Ring. In fact, it wouldn't at all. But you can see how long it was since they last used them. You could use that to calculate if it would have been available again. We can see these are like two minutes before. So you can also use this bit to see would I have had that cooldown available to me if you can't remember? Because if this period of time is greater than the cooldown of that ability, then yes, you did have it available. Interrupts may well be useful if it's a boss that needs particular interrupts. And we can see that not just as general interrupts, because that's all something like SCADA will tell you, but this will tell you specifically what was interrupted. So we can see that the blast, which is from the blue ad was interrupted how many times and by whom. The recursion, how many times that was interrupted. We can also see how many were missed and then in this particular case the expedite and ablated pulse as well, which in the last phase want interrupting too. We can see how many people attempted to interrupt but missed. This is usually as a result of someone else getting there first. Dispels, in case they are needed, this will tell you another, obviously there's none on here. Should we have a look at Trilliax, where this may actually show up um, there. So if there's any particular dispelling that needs happening, you can see when and where that was done. Resources is a fairly useful one. If, again, we need to look at a particular person here to see how well certain resources are used. Hit points, not that important to me. But say something like Holy Power would be fairly useful to be aware of and to see how many holy points holy power points are gained over the course of a fight to see how many were wasted and from which particular abilities that is potentially useful there and finally casts this is useful if you want to uh, check out yourself let's just click on me say at the start of a fight now the view we've got here is obviously not as useful so what we might have a look for example is timelines so at this point let's scroll down I can see exactly which abilities I was casting and when so the all abilities are all down here and it lets me see when I was doing them and I could scroll that for the whole fight if necessary but usually it'll be particular portions of the fight that you want to do this for so for example if this will behave which is not at the moment we could see that the abilities I'm using, in which order, for the first crucial seconds of a fight, when you've got your DPS cooldown going, you've got your potion going, you may well, as in this case, have heroism going as well. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a taste of some of the basics that you can do beyond just looking at what rank you got on the different fights. Next week, I'll be taking a look at what you can do in detail in terms of comparing your logs with another player's logs. I hope you found this interesting, as always. If you did, don't forget to subscribe for further content. Put comments down below for anything you want me to go over in particular, because then I could bring that up later on in the series. And until next time, I'll see you later.